Hey YouTube, California Modern. We're gonna be building a G2SA together. So first off, the main housing, um, there for this guy, there is a piece of rubber that comes on the bottom of it. Take this rubber piece out, we don't need it. And that'll go right in there firm. Now, um, this is a tube of grease that I got from West 3D, they sell this. A um, little interesting, actually, <laughs> the way they do the grease, seeing how it's from the uh, Portland area. If you know anything about uh, world happenings, you'll totally get what I am talking about. Uh, we just wanna put a little bit of grease between the um, shaft and the rear shim that's gonna go back there. If you know anything about these motors, in general, they get freakishly hot. We're gonna take the first shim and put it on the shaft here and slide that down. Let the grease stay on there, not a big deal. In fact, if anything, it's gonna help lubricate and keep things on there. Uh, you wanna get that thing on there. Uh, there you go. Now I'm gonna put just a little bit more of this linear rail grease on the face of this washer because that's what's gonna be in contact with the plastic. I don't really care if there's grease behind there. It doesn't really bother me. Um, what I do is I put this guy through with the grease on there. Then you have a sealed bearing that goes on here as well. Slide that down. This is one direction. So you wanna make sure that the splines are towards the back of this. And you're gonna press everything together the best you can. Put another bearing on top. Then we're gonna take our front cover wherever I put it and put the front cover back on top. Here it is, right in front of me. Okay, super simple, super easy. Would help if I had the right bit in there. Okay, so once you're done with putting a bearing, the, two, the shaft through one bearing, the sprocket in another bearing, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna cut off a piece of filament. It doesn't have to be super long, but long enough that you can do what needs to be done here. Um, so, had a piece of filament, don't know where it went. So we'll just grab another piece of green here, because I have it here, no big deal. Okay, so I got a piece of green. I'm gonna shove this through the tube and I'm going to get it in here. And so the whole idea is I want the teeth on this gear to be lined up with the filament. I want it to be as almost the center as possible and then lock it down. And then I'm going to rotate this and see if the filament is coming out with it. So you should be able to almost have the filament roll out and then be able to roll it back in, no problem. So I'm not touching the filament, I'm just using the gears. You can see it's going in and out, it's fine. So to me, that works, this quality, that's gonna work great, it's gonna grip great, okay. Now, the bearings I'm gonna put in dry, very dry. Okay, now that that's on. Then I'm gonna need the spacer, it goes around the bearings. Wanna make sure it's clocked correctly. There is a cutout in the back. You see that here, this cutout here. This is for this bolt down here. So make sure that is cro clocked correctly. You'll run that through, hold that in. Now, the weirdest part is putting these gears together, okay? Now, I had disassembled it for reassembly, and you can see how that works pretty well. Get an idea of it. But we need to do one important, very important, crucial step here is lubing these. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in here on the bearings. They can go in dry, totally fine. What I need to do is take some of this lube for the bearings and I'm going to carefully squirt it all up in here, trying to coat this as good as I can. Now, the you don't wanna to put too much grease in here because um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna, the motor's gonna get really hot and that grease is gonna become very viscous, very liquid. So now that I have all that lubed up pretty good, I'm just gonna take the pin of this and move it around, trying to clear all the excess that I can. I don't want too much grease in here. I want, oops, as I knocked that over. I just want enough grease. So going around this, making sure it's in all the nooks and crannies and everything, 
making sure it's all lubed really good, um, and then try to get the excess off of there. So that's gonna do a number of things for us. It's gonna make sure that this stays lubricated and working well. Then you take this thing and you gotta kind of rock it back and forth on there. All right, so now that that's in there and good, I'm gonna take these freakishly long bolts, shove them through here, and then I'm going to clock my motor. Well, you don't want the bolt all the way in, just barely enough. But I need to get this gear in between here. And so I'm going to just kind of roll it around until it locks in place and goes right in. There we go. Now I'm going to secure it with these two bolts. Beautiful. Now you want it long enough to come out the back, especially if you're using the EBB36 like I am. Cam bus. Okay, so I get that tight, very tight, tight as can be. And then I'm going to um, put this guy on the front. I'm gonna spin this thing around, make sure that everything is lubed good. And it feels so much smoother now that there's grease in there. Before when I did this without grease, I uh, was not happy by any means. So um, really cool they designed this so that we could reach the front of it to pull filament in if you want to. I do like that feature, I think it's really cool. So um, as far as I know, everything's lubed and good. I do have to take apart the old idler um, because it was ABS. And so this thing's kind of a pain to get out. It's, it's not bad, it's just tedious, okay? I'm going to take a smaller Allen, what I have through this hole, push this thing through, if I can. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a hammer out here in a second. No big deal. Just a little tedious, that's all. No, I have some other Allen head bolt. Allen head bolt here. There we go. Okay, so I'm just taking a small Allen head and pushing the pin out and grabbing the bearing. Reverse process, you take this, put your bearing in here, like so, and push that pin all the way in and seat it. Okay. Now what we're doing is we're going to take this with the pin, shove it in here. Everything should fit nicely. You shouldn't have any binding on anything whatsoever. If you do, then your print settings are not correct and you should probably go back and recalibrate your printer to its entirety. So I'm going to tighten this up. Now my focus of this printer is input shaving, so I'm gonna get that nice and tight where it still opens, but it's nice and tight. I don't want it falling out. Last thing is to put the LDO uh, spring tensioner in here and uh, tighten them up. Now I'm going to preload this because I can. I just wanna make sure that this is going to grip I don't want it overly tight because I don't want the filament being dug into. And the great way to test that is to pull it out and look at it. So I have, it's hard to see in camera, but I do have a little bit of gear grip on the teeth. So I'm gonna loosen it just a hair. And that should be good enough for what we're trying to do with it. All right, so the EBB36 component. So I bought these cool knurled um, spacers and I got them on Amazon. Steph, old guy melts plastic. So you can get them on Amazon or on, um, Oh, what's that thing? The China stuff. Uh, AliExpress, there we go. So whichever you choose, you know, the preference is up to you. It doesn't bother me at all what you do. But um, anyway, we're going to install my modified EBB36 mount on the back and secure it to these using eight M3 by eights. What you should have here is a solid connection, everything tight, nothing loose. So what you should end up with is this assembly, basically like this. And then this wire should come through here. I'm gonna cut this and make it shorter, by the way. Just a personal preference. 
And then we install our EBB36 into the back of the mount. The back of the mount does have two heat certs that are put in reverse. So keep that in mind before assembling. It would definitely suck to have to redo all of this again. But here's the heat cert, one here and one here. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this guy in. Now with the Chirpy tool head, whether you're running version seven or version eight, um, yeah, see how long that wire is? I hate how long that is. Oops. I hate that loop. So I'm going to cut it down to where it's probably cut that much out of it, honestly, just so mine's nice and tight up on there. It's just how I like to run things. But when this thing is mounted, uh, yep. This thing is mounted and secured. Um, you'll notice a few things. When this is all bolted together, this isn't the right spacer, by the way. But uh, there is a another spacer that goes on the back side of here to mount it to the uh, to this guy, the mount block. So it all it all it all mounts. There's a little spacer that goes here, and that keeps everything nice and tight and secure on your tool head. So anyway, that is the G2SA build for the Trident. Uh, we'll dive into it a little bit more as we get a little closer. I'm about to do belts very soon, and I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that up there, and uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.